Now India is hosting the G20 foreign ministers meeting, fractured east-west relations over the conflict in Ukraine and increasing concerns about China's global aspirations are set to dominate the meeting. This meeting is particularly crucial for India's hopes to use its chairmanship of the group to leverage its position on the global stage and adopt a neutral stance on Ukraine. After welcome dinner yesterday, the main meetings are being held today. India wishes to focus on issues of importance to developing nations like rising inflation, debt stress, health, climate change and food and energy security. However, the split over the invasion of Ukraine, its impact on global energy and food security is predicted to overshadow the proceedings. The antagonism has left G20 host India in the position of trying to reconcile clearly irreconcilable differences. Addressing foreign ministers, the Indian Prime Minister's Prime Minister flagged deep global divisions. Financial crisis, climate change, pandemic, terrorism and wars clearly shows that global governance has failed. We are meeting at a time of deep global divisions. As foreign minister, it is but natural that your discussions are affected by the geopolitical tensions of the day. Considering these issues, we may not all, always be of one mind. In fact, there are some matters of sharp differences of opinions and views. Yet, we must find common ground and provide direction because that is what the world expects of us. At the start of the foreign minister's meeting, leaders observed a minute's silence for those who lost their lives in Turkey and Syria quake. Now the meeting is being attended by 40 delegations including those headed by the Russian Foreign Minister, the US Secretary of State and the Chinese Foreign Minister. Russia intends to use the meeting to tell the world who as per Moscow is responsible for the political and economic crisis that the world finds itself in. Germany stated that it wants to counter Russian propaganda and the United States has underlined that it is important to call out Moscow. EU says Russia must be made to understand that the war in Ukraine has to end. Russian Foreign Minister Lavrov is seated with a delegation from the UAE and East Asian countries. India has declined to blame Moscow for the war, seeking a diplomatic solution and in fact has also boosted its purchase of Russian oil. Remember, India has also abstained from voting in UN resolutions that condemn the Ukraine invasion. Yesterday, Lavrov and India's Foreign Minister S.J. Shankar held discussions in New Delhi. The meetings also being watched for how tensions between Washington and Beijing will play out. China has been backing a political solution to the war in Ukraine. Last month, the U.S. shot down what it said was a Chinese surveillance balloon just off South Carolina. This after it spent days traveling across the country. The incident widened the diplomatic rift between the two countries. The U.S. Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, has no plans to meet the foreign ministers of Russia and China. The British Foreign Secretary, James Cleverly, will meet the Chinese foreign minister on the sidelines. Cleverly said that he would like to support India in having a successful G20 presidency. For more on this, we're now being joined by our principal diplomatic correspondent Sidhan Sibyl from New Delhi. Sidhan, thank you so much for joining us. Now, India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi says that multilateral institutions have failed to meet the world's most pressing challenges while opening the G20 foreign ministers meeting. What can you tell us? Well, a very important statement by the Indian Prime Minister that sets the tone for the larger conversation that has started. Now, his focus was that how global governance has failed and it's one of the poorest countries who are being impacted. Essentially, he also talked about uh, the geopolitical tensions that, of course, refers to the ongoing Russia-Ukraine conflict, but talked about how it is impacting the developing countries. We know that how developing countries are facing the challenges of food, 
fuel and uh, uh, commodity prices increasing. But uh, if we look at the statement by the Indian Prime Minister, he talked about debt crisis, climate change, counter-terrorism issues that are close to the heart of the Indian policy makers. What India wants to talk about uh, uh, the global challenges. Uh, uh, the worry, of course, is that they being somehow diluted amidst the din between uh, the Russia and uh, the Western world. Because remember, it's the Russia-Ukraine conflict right. that has led to almost no conversation between the two sides. Right, absolutely. Siddhan, thank you so much for bringing us all the updates on this. We will, of course, continue to develop, track the developments very closely. Now, for more on this, we're also being joined by Pankaj Saran from New Delhi. Pankaj is a former Deputy National Security Advisor for India and former Indian Ambassador to Russia. Thank you so much for joining us on this broadcast. Now, Mr. Saran, same question to you. Prime Minister Narendra Modi seems to have set the tone for the larger G20 agenda by saying that multilateral so institutions much. have failed to meet the world's most pressing challenges. What do you make of this? I'm really impressed with um, the Prime Minister's statement that is extremely robust and it pulls no punches and he lets sets the agenda uh, right up front. Basically, uh, the, the, the assertion that multilateralism is in crisis and that uh, global governance is in crisis and that differences should not allow the foreign ministers to find areas of convergence. I think this will probably be the template for India's uh, presidency during the rest of the year because I think we are quite clear in our mind that there are differences but we are also clear in our mind that since we have excellent relations with all Well, we seem to be having an issue with that line. We will get Mr. Pankaj Saran back with us in a short while from now. But India, as you know, is hosting the G20 foreign ministers meeting and fractured east-west relations over the conflict in Ukraine, as well as increasing concerns about China's global aspirations are set to dominate the meeting. Once again, we're now being joined by Mr. Pankaj Saran. Thank you so much for staying with us. I hope you can hear me now. Yes, I can. Thank you. I, I'm, you know, visit, you're audible. Thank you. Uh, right. We just had a slight problem with the line there. If you could just uh, okay. tell us your views on the comments made by Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Yes, I, I was saying that I think his uh, statement is very, very interesting and extremely well drafted because uh, it is robust and uh, it lays out the issues right up front and sets the template, not just, I think, for today's meeting, but it uh, shows the Indian approach uh, for the rest of the G20 presidency, which is basically that multilateralism is in crisis, that global governance is in crisis, and the institutions are incapable of addressing these problems. And number three, it is obvious that there are differences, including not just on economic issues, but on political issues. So the call is being made that let us try and find areas of convergence because Beyond is now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.